Welcome everyone to Train Tuesday. I'm your host, Jim Wigan with Atherin. So glad you could join us. Hey, if you found us on our YouTube channel and you like the type of content that Atherin brings you on a weekly uh, basis, do us a favor. Go ahead and like this video, comment on this video. While you're at it, subscribe to our channel. And you know what? Hit that notification bell. That way you're notified every time a new video like this drops into our channel. We're going to be talking about the Atherin Genesis GP15 series of locomotives. And this little workhorse is probably going to find a place on your layout. We're offering some great roads, both original delivered class ones, as well as some short line stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with some model railroad goodness, talking about the GP15-1. So EMD built the four axle GP15-1 back in June of 1976 and they continued production until March of 1982. Now this was intended to provide an alternative to some of the rebuilding programs that many railroads were applying to their early road switchers. Now it's generally employed as a yard switcher or a light road switcher, but it was kind of launched as an economical uh, solution versus taking a class of uh, first generation locomotive and rebuilding it. So something like some of the Paducahs that we saw at the time. Now, a total of 310 units were built for American railroads and a number of these GP15-1s remain in service today for yard work as well as light road duty. Now, the one that you see on your screen here, speaking of switchers, is a Union Pacific locomotive, 677. This is a GP15-1. This is one that we offered a few runs ago, so our distribution center is completely out of them. However, if you really like this locomotive, you might be able to find this on uh, one of your favorite online dealers or your local hobby shop. In case that's the uh, case, the item number for this is ATHG68040. Again, that is ATHG68040. Now let's talk about the exciting roads that we're going to be offering for the month of August. Now, all of the roads that I'll be talking about are going to be available for pre-order through your Atherin dealer from now until Friday, August 30th. We're going to start out with the Missouri Pacific. Now, the Missouri Pacific was the largest buyer of the GP15-1. They purchased 160 examples from EMD starting in 1976. Then again, in 1982, they purchased 30 GP15 ACs. Now these were numbered 1715 to 1744. Now these units use AC power for traction motors instead of the traditional DC power. Other than the four units built for Venezuelan National Railways, Missouri Pacific was the only other purchaser of this specific model. Most can still be found working today for their current owner, Union Pacific, used in both local and yard duties. We're offering, for the first time, an unnumbered version here so that you can add as many Missouri Pacifics as you like, or maybe you really like that paint scheme and it's going to become your new short line. So what we've got pictured here is 1716, 1722. Again, these represent factory fresh right out of LaGrange. So the unnumbered one, if you want this era of Missouri Pacific, you can just simply add your Missouri Pacific decals. Or again, if you really like this paint scheme, and you want to use it for your short line, you can. Now, specific features of the Missouri Pacific locomotives in this run. These are going to have operating class lights, operating class lights with the Tsunami 2 variant only. They are going to have lit number boards, and those work both with the DC as well as the DCC Tsunami 2 equipped. They're going to have Blombird B trucks, and of course, the Missouri Pacific famous four spark arresters. Horns are going to be Leslie three chime, and they're going to have a rounded front anti-climber and front and rear small EMD plows. Heading to the early 2000s, we're going to see some former Conrail now. Now, with the 1998 split of Conrail, Norfolk Southern acquired 58% of the former railroad's conglomerate assets. With Conrail having bought 100 GP15-1s, 58 of these were transferred to Norfolk Southern ownership. 
uh, they continue to be used in switching local and secondary service. Now, it's important to note that Norfolk Southern retired the GP15-1s in 2007. However, many of these reliable units have survived and found further employment. We're offering two road numbers for these early 2000s era switchers, 1432 and 1440. Norfolk Southern, of course, is going to have features just for these two models. These are former Conrail units, so they're going to have Leslie RS3L horns with a low profile bracket. And something that we get a lot of requests for, ditch lights on both ends will alternate when the horn is blown. This is a DCC Tsunami 2 equipped version only. So if you get the Tsunami 2 and you depress the horn button, they're going to wig wag, alternate, oscillate, whatever your term may be. That is a common question that we get on our social media. So there's your answer for that. So we've talked a little bit about class ones. Let's talk about some short lines and some lease power. We know you modelers love lease power. And so we're happy to announce Larry's Truck and Electric. Now, Larry's Truck and Electric is a large locomotive part supplier and rebuilder. They're based out of McDonald, Ohio. They purchase locomotives secondhand from railroads that deem them either too expensive to repair or they want to upgrade to newer models. Larry's Truck and Electric will in turn rebuild and lease these units back to power needed railroads, either on a short term or a long term basis. With a simple splash of fresh paint and initials on the long hood, they are leased wherever they're needed. And they can be found anywhere throughout the United States. And we're offering three different schemes for you to choose from. The first two are 2008 era, 1414. Now, since these came from different parts, uh, different railroads, they're going to have uh, features that are specific to each locomotive. Starting with 1414, this is going to have a front and rear small EMB style plow. Its horn is a Nathan P3. Likewise, 1427, also from the 2008 era, it's also going to have a front and rear small plow. And it's going to have a Leslie three chime horn. Last but not least, we've got 1441. This is a little bit later. This is 2011 era. The plows have been removed, and this one has a Nathan K3 horn mounted on the long hood. And you'll also notice there's some cab mounted AC units as well. So, features specific to these three locomotives these are former Conrail. They've had their uh, nose class lights removed. They're going to have the blunt style front anti climber. They're going to have lit number boards, Blomberg B trucks, of course, road number specific details, and front and rear alternating flashing ditch lights. Again, that's a Tsunami 2 only option. Now let's jump right into present day with the Florida Central. So the current iteration of Florida Central Railroad started near the end of 1986 running between Umatilla and Orlando, Florida. Now they're using former seaboard airline and Atlantic coastline trackage. They operate 68 miles of track with connections to CSX and Orlando. In 2023, just actually last fall, they unveiled two newly acquired former Missouri Pacific GP15-1s in a black and yellow seaboard coastline inspired paint scheme. We think this paint scheme looks super sharp on the GP15s, and hopefully you do as well, because we're going to offer two road numbers of Florida Central. Again, this is 2023, so this is less than a year old. We're offering units number 655 and 713, features that are specific just for the Florida Central. These are former Missouri Pacific XUP. They're going to have the class lights removed. They have front uh, I'm sorry, they have lit number boards, front and rear ditch lights, rounded style front anti-climber, Lombard B trucks, and of course, road number specific details. Another one that we get a lot of requests for, especially for you guys that have smaller layouts and maybe you just can't decide on which class one that you want to model. Well, look at the top of your screen there. We're offering something for you guys. This is Patriot Rail. This is a 2011 era style locomotive. Now, Patriot Rail is a holding company founded back in 2006 that operates a number of short line railroads in different parts of the United States. Now, their headquarters is located in Jacksonville, Florida. 
they interchange with all of the major class one railroads. Now, since their fleet of GP15-1 locomotives share the same corporate scheme, we are offering a painted model with customer applied decals for the following roads, Louisiana and Northwest, Piedmont and Northern, Sacramento Valley, Tennessee Southern, and Utah Central. You know, it's also a great starting point to create your own freelance version as well. So features specific just for the Patriot Rail locomotive. These are former Conrail. They've had their uh, nose class lights removed. They're gonna feature the blunt style front anti-climber, lit number boards, Blomberg V trucks, and of course, front and rear alternating flashing ditch lights with the Tsunami 2 equipped versions. Just under that, you're gonna notice the Wells Fargo Lines era 2020 locomotive. Now, Wells Fargo is really better known for its banks, and they also operate a rail car locomotive leasing division. According to their website, Wells Fargo Rail is one of the largest and most diverse rail equipment operating lessers in North America, with more than 135,000 rail cars and 850 locomotives. This GP15-1 therefore can find use on nearly any modern road that is in need of short or long-term power. So here's unit number 564. Again, this can go anywhere on your layout. This is gonna have features such as the cab air conditioner. You'll notice the firecracker style antenna. There are no class lights, front and rear ditch lights, and the Nathan K3LA horn on a bracket. Pretty cool. Now, you knew this was probably coming up when you saw the announcements uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yes, we are doing legendary liveries. Again, love them or hate them, they continue to sell. And again, since this is Genesis, we try to make it plausible. So let's take a little look into an alternate history for a moment. As large quantities of first generation diesels began reaching the end of their useful life, EMD sent out two demonstrators to entice railroads with a modern version of a small general purpose switcher built with refurbished trucks, traction motors, and generators. Well, maybe they should have. Other than an artist rendering for publication, there has been no known official EMD demonstrators for the GP15-1. We have given the modeler a look into what we think they would have looked like when they came straight out of LaGrange, Illinois. Painted in the then standard EMD scheme of the era, these GP15-1s would look great switching an industry or performing yard duties to help prove their worth to your model railroad. So imagine 1976. Imagine EMD had these demonstrators out and this is what they would have looked like. Now again, this is based on an artist's rendering of the time. It was never published, but EMD certainly seemed to think about it. We're offering two road numbers, number 150 and 151. These two will have um, features specifically for the demonstrators, including operation, uh, operating class lights and the Tsunami 2 equipped versions, lit number boards, Blomberg V trucks, Leslie three chime horn, no front anti-climber, and front small EMD plow. Now not to be done with the legendary liveries, we're also offering two more for a very popular road right now, Southern Railway. We've got a lot of requests lately for Southern Railway. We're gonna indulge a little bit with some legendary liveries. Again, alternate universe, we're looking mid 1970s. So Southern Railway was a loyal EMD customer for many years. With the majority of their diesel locomotive roster comprised of EMD products, it would have been pretty plausible for the carrier to order GP15-1s to help with their aging fleet of first generation locomotives. Ordered with the then standard high short hood and long hood forward operation, these would fit right in with the other AMD models of that era. Painted in the Southern tuxedo scheme, they would make a great addition to your fleet. We're offering two different road numbers here, 5300 as well as 5313. Now features specific to the Southern Railway, these will have operating class lights in the Tsunami 2 equipped versions, lit number boards, Blomberg M trucks, high short hood, Nathan three chime horn on both ends and no front anti-climber. If you do get the Tsunami 2 equipped version, they are gonna come from the factory set up running in the proper direction, long hood forward. Now let's talk a little bit overall about the features of this locomotive. 
overall, these are going to have operating class lights if equipped. Now, what that means is if the actual prototype had uh, class lights, then the model will have class lights. It's also important to note that these are the Tsunami 2 equipped versions only. There are um, ways for you to make these um, functional if you go with the DCC ready versions, but all of that lighting and such is up to you. Whereas if you get the Tsunami 2 version, it's pretty much just push a button and you've got classification lights. Likewise, if it's a more modern locomotive, since classification lights are no longer used, then it's not going to have working classification lights on there. Again, look at the details on our website, atherin.com, look at the new announcements tab and select the PDF and download that PDF or print it for specific details on the locomotives that you may be interested in. These will have operating number boards. Again, that's across the board. So if it's a DCC ready, DC standard, or the ones equipped with Tsunami 2, they're both gonna have operating number boards. Coupler cut levers, MU hoses, train line hoses, full cab interior, walkway tread, windshield wipers, wire grab irons, and sander lines. Now again, for a complete list of details, please go to athlon.com and select the new announcements tab. Look for the GP15 tab and you can open up the PDF as well as place your pre-orders online at athern.com. So one last reminder, you have got until Friday, August 30th, 2024. It's gonna go quick. Get these down to your dealer, pre-order the locomotives of your choice. Hopefully there's something in there that you can use for your railroad, no matter what size it is. So that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this program and the um, introduction of the GP15-1. Now remember those new um, updates, including the lighting updates, we have technically done those on a former run. Those runs have not hit here yet. You may be wondering when those are gonna be here. Current ETA on the last um, announcement of GP15s we're looking at November of 2024. So by the time of this broadcast, not too much longer, just a few more months. So with that being said, I hope everyone out there is getting some modeling done this summer. You know what? Be happy, be kind to others, and above all, high greens. Take care, everyone.